Well, hi guys. Yeah, it's still the Easter weekend. Yeah, but it's Monday. Day off for everybody in this country. Um, here we call it a red day. <clears throat> well, it doesn't refer to anything bad. It's just <laughs> what it's called. I'm not sure why. It's a fun name, a red day. Alert, alert. Well, everybody's at the garden center shopping. Shopping stuff for new plants for the gardens and greenhouses. Long lines everywhere. Um, so I had to go there as well, of course. <clears throat> Don't know why, but we all follow the same schedule this um, holiday weekend. Anyway, look, I'm all set. Uh, we're getting there, we're really getting there. Looks a little bit more airy. Not so tightly squeezed in together, the plants I'm talking about. <laughs> Sun is shining outside. Um, I have assembled and bought and placed the new light tubes where they belong. Looks like this for now. I'm not certain if this is going to be the way uh, it shall stay and remain, but yeah, we see progress. And a red grow LED light down there, a new one for the valves. And I move the bulbos so I can keep a better track of them and a little bit more control on when they're supposed to be watered. Sitting in coconut husk fiber chips mixed with a bit of perlite and um, cut. Spag moss, yeah. So it really keeps the moisture well, the bulbophyllums, and yeah, they stay kind of, uh, yeah, moist for about a couple of days a week. So, but at times I forgot to order them, so they dropped a couple of leaves. So now, when sitting there, they are a bit more available for me to really take care of them the way they deserve. Amaryllis. <laughs> Summer rest, no, <laughs> they're all supposed to grow now to be treated just like normal, regular house plants, but they don't look much for the world to me, do they? <laughs> well, they're soon gonna be on the outside vacation on the balcony during summer until frost arrives, so um, they will cope. Bulbos, Elizabeth, and Buckleberry. I haven't seen any blooms on her for well, at least one year. So, but I think she's um, she's settled now after having been reported. Yeah, as you probably guessed, bulbophyllums are not so really fond of being reported. Not even the best time of the year and best growing state. They just hate it, despise it. So now she's looking great. And her companion, she needed to go outside to the balcony in the chilly air with loads of rain water to put out a good spike and her flowers are amazing really really worth keeping this orchid Bubophyllum arfecianum green times grandiflorum I love this Bubophyllum yes she's going outside yeah in a couple of months what do we have here yeah I think these guys need a bit more light, but at least they're getting the proper amount of humidity from the humidifier. The 150 watt machine <clears throat> costs a lot of money. I've gone through it in my brain a few times, and I found that the amount of money this one costs when it's switched on, you can choose uh, whether you would like to have 40% humidity or 80 Set humidity, yeah, you can see here, 60, 65, 70, 70, yeah, 80, yeah, I can go as high up as, yeah, 80, so 40 is a little bit too little, uh, 55, yeah, I always land at about 55%, I think that's uh, a decent amount of humidity, uh, I mean, I, uh, I'm supposed to live here as well and thrive just as much as the orchid, so, 
Um, I think that it's worth it since without it, trips are damaging my orchids anyway. So I have to throw them away and some of them are quite expensive. So, uh, yeah, with that said, uh, the stand, yeah, uh, it's not so crowded anymore. Put a little lamp up there, pointing directly towards the dendrobium chrysotoxum, yeah. And the lamp up there, pointing directly to the maxillary tenifolia, the one which is going to be on the balcony during summertime in the sunniest spot you can ever imagine. She actually bloomed here for the first time last year, so, uh, and she continued to bloom. A couple of flowers every now and then, yeah? She loves to be given loads of light, that's for sure. And the stand, not so crowded. A couple of cactuses, aloe veras, sitting there. My favorite phalaenopsis, joy fairy tale, pyloric, always and constantly in bloom. Yeah, I think this one is the most rewarding plant I've had from Swata or Gideon. Doesn't say pyloric, but you can see for yourself. It's got three lips. And that means pyloric, yeah. This guy, this hybrid from Meltonia Moreliana. A Moreliana cross. Yeah, the kind of great flowers. Resembles the real species one. Flowers. Um, yeah, she's getting there. Couple of new. New growth. And Greco Magdalena up there. Arranges Elysia up there. Yeah. There's some other. Kind of low light. A little bit more low light orchids as the Eridus Holichiana, which I got two of. Mm -mm -mm. And Grecoid orchids here. Yeah, Rinko stylus and Grecums and a couple of bands. This one actually bloomed under this kind of light, so it's about 6,000 loots provided on that light tube. So, uh, yeah. She came out with two lovely spikes and another little plant, a little shoot from the side. Keiki, yes, Stanhopia, or Culada, doing fine. What else is there to address today? Uh, um, Kitleas. This one has given us ten, about 10,000 loots. Really great, kind of high in lumen. 1825, I think. And up here, the same goes for these uh, light tubes as well. 10,000 loops. So you better be careful. Uh, a few of the kitleas up here drop a couple of leaves. The leaves turn a bit yellow ish. As for this one, you can see. Yeah. So. Too much sunlight all of a sudden without any acclimatizing. It's not really, really recommended as you can see, but I didn't have much of a choice, did I? Lack of space and everything. So, um, look at her. Saigonesia in to Blue comes out with five flowers. They are stunning. As you saw, I posted a uh, photo in the community not long ago. And she's also kind of nicely scented. But it's scent. Um, it um, changes character throughout the day. So I don't remember which, but uh, let's say that it was during, um, shall we say, midday. She smelled like pee, a little bit like pee. <laughs> but during evening, she smelled just simply amazing deliciously scented so um yeah it's a funny plant uh not much in bloom i shall not brag about loads of blooms for the moment but we do have this gorgeous little thingy this eonocidium popcorn you can see here not long ago all of the flowers look just like this one simply purple-ish 
And as the flowers ages, they are turning yellow at the edges. Hmm, she's doing great. A little, little tiny growth there, sitting in this glass vase with a little bit of water to the bottom. Uh, these guys, I think these guys are the most difficult ones to uh, grow. And that includes every possible genus of orchid genesis you can come to think of. I think they are smashing, mostly because of yellow uh, edges. But they are so, so, so susceptible to rot. Really difficult one to keep. And keep alive. Yeah. And up here on the top shelf, as for last year, same procedure as last year, yay. <laughs> I keep my three ketocenum. The ones left. Yeah. I haven't began to watering them uh, yet, but they will be reported and stuff in a couple of days' time. I will make a video, I think. So, yeah, let's uh, move into the kitchen. Here, I put another, uh, yeah, I moved a bench. It was in the way. <laughs> yeah, I didn't need it anymore, so I put it here. And... Things are still to be adjusted a bit and moved around, but... And here to the left is where the best light source is. As I got morning sun. So, uh, the most high light craving orchis needs to be on the left side of the window. <laughs> so, loads of things to, I mean, to think about when arranging them placing the orchids where you want to be and the cabinet yeah, it's there looking kind of all right but i'm not satisfied no 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 there's going to be some adjustments i bought a new led tube 5000 lumen really strong light yes and a couple of new small fans with a tiny, 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 teeny, weeny, weeny power consumption each. So we're going to save up some energy and use some more modern technology, yeah, on this fat power supply back there, yeah. So there's another project and this lovely orchid is still in bloom. Paphiopedalum rosidorn. Extremely rewarding. It just gives and gives and gives without asking for anything in return almost. And if we're lucky, there's going to be a secondary spike here. Or bloom, I mean. So it's a sequential a bloomer and fragrant. What more can you ask? And a lovely mot of foliage. So she provides all in one, all included, so to speak. Ah, this little cutie. Um, this is a plant I've had for a long, long time. It's the um, it's a primer hybrid cross from Claus and Orchidine. BC Brassicatlia binosa. Yeah, so it's nodosa in it. Brassavola. But she simply blooms from each and every matured cane. And this little cane is matured, as you can see. Gonna give us one flower, but it's always better than nothing. She is recovering, so let her take her time. Well, on this half empty shelf sits the most spectacular Tulumnia orchid of them all. I got this one for free. Uh, from a local vendor. This is a fail with the other one. <clears throat> the one I got for one euro from Swarta. Oh, really, really great, but it caught scale. And scale on a Tulumnia 
Well, I don't know anybody who succeeded uh, to keep it alive after having received a whole bunch of scale visiting. But still, look at the Scandons, a species, scented. I think that her flowers are smashing. Not so huge, uh, the hybrids flowers are. Whoops, larger. But there is one more spire coming. Seems to be developing nicely and capable of branching. That's great. And yeah, look. So she's sitting in her moss and I'm not going to remove her or report her or even touch this orchid. Tulumnia scandens. But it's a funny thing with a scented Tulumnia. Mmm. It's a beautiful, really special, unique scent on this one. Nothing I ever felt before. And as I said, as I told you, I went to the garden center today. And then up with a crowd of people. But I I know, I know. Hush, hush. Don't say a thing. <clears throat> but, um, after at least 10 minutes consideration, I just had to grab her. I know I shouldn't. And it wasn't due to the price level all that much. was due to her being such a smashing plant. Look at her. Ah, look at the lip. Yeah. Looks just like candy to me. On a bow. Ah, first. Ah, no, not the first, but the second. Uh, 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 thing I looked at was, of course, it's uh, the roots inside the pot and if she carried any meal bugs. <clears throat> yes, to me, she was so, so dear. Just like candy. And a couple of more buds to open. Good foliage. This uh, remarkable lip, pyloric, almost, yeah, or is it? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, the color combination, I just fell for it. So, so I've got foul fever. I believe. <laughs> yeah, I think that's very, very common fever. So. And it's uh, highly welcome. So, I guess that's the video for today. Um, yeah, not so much, but I try to keep a little bit shorter, but it's really, really difficult for being me. I always have a little bit too much to show you guys, but, and I love to squeeze uh, as much in as possible into every video I I make so yeah anyway it's good to see you here I loved these last couple of days it's been so 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 both uh, healing and intoxicating all the sunlight and yeah it feels good to be alive yeah so thank you guys for watching and I hope you feel the same Talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.